Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In today's video, we're going over the state of PlayStation 2 emulation on Android. Let's get started. All right, to kick things off, you're probably not going to like what I have to say in this video, so make sure to hit that like button and make sure to hit the subscribe button as well. This is mid-2021, we're talking about at the time of filming anyway, and PS2 emulation on Android is not that great. Yes, there is a free and a paid version of a PS2 emulator on the Google Play Store. The paid version is $12.99 in Canada and $9.99 in the US. And this is called Damon PS2, and it's a pretty bad emulator. One of the worst things about Damon PS2 is that it originally stole code from PCSX2, which is a completely different emulator. PCSX2 is an incredible PS2 emulator for PC, and I've done a couple of videos for it. I'll leave them in the description below. Back in 2018, the PCSX2 team actually put out an official statement about the Daemon PS2 emulator and the fact that it did steal code. After that incident, the Daemon PS2 emulator disappeared from the Play Store, but it has since resurfaced. And scrolling down to the bottom here, it has over 5 million installs, and that's for the free version. The paid version has over 100,000 installs. For this video, I was actually going to install Diamond PS2 emulator to show you how it runs games, or rather how poorly it runs games, to be more accurate. Emulation accuracy on Damon PS2 is not very good at all. It's pretty horrendous, to be quite frank with you. There are a ton of hacks in the background to kind of make the games appear that they're running at full speed, but it's not very good. Now, moving on from that, when actually going through the installer here, there was something that really raised a red flag. So this thing asks for two different permissions. The first permission is to access the storage on the device. And this is absolutely fine. It needs to access your storage to read the games. That's not an issue at all. But the second thing it asked for here was a bit of an issue. It says permission to access device information. Now there are apps out there that do use this information, including some games, but Damon PS2 emulator here is a free app and it's also just an emulator. It shouldn't require this at all. Interestingly enough, if you try to install this and then just disable this access, the emulator won't work, and that's a big red flag. So I quickly checked out their privacy agreement. It was written in Chinese, so I used Google Translate to convert it to English. In 4A here, it says the app will not provide, sell, rent, share, or trade your personal information to any unrelated third party and unrelated is the key word. In 4C, it says it will basically sell your information to partnered third parties for the purposes of advertisement. And this practice is fairly common with a lot of free apps. Either way, I'm not really cool with this app asking me for my phone data and then refusing to work when I say no. Fortunately, there is another PlayStation 2 emulator available on the Play Store and it's called Play. This one is free and open source, and that's a big plus. This app currently has over 100,000 installs, which is pretty good. It's still extremely early on in development. Right now, the Play emulator is pretty simple and straightforward. It either works or it doesn't work on your phone. It doesn't have a lot of options and it's not compatible with a lot of games. On the play menu, we have five different options, recent, homebrew, unsorted, settings, and about. So let's go on ahead and take a look at settings. On the settings menu, we have emulator settings and UI settings. On the emulator settings menu, here are your options and there's not really a whole lot here in terms of performance. The top two options are purely visual, the frame rate counter and the show virtual pad if you're using touchscreen controls. On PS2 games, I probably don't recommend using touchscreen controls, but I guess to each their own. In terms of video settings, we have set resolution factor, resize output to widescreen, forced by linear filtering, and presentation mode. On the set resolution factor, you can crank this emulator up to eight times resolution. Although I wouldn't really recommend this considering this emulator is pretty taxing on your phone to begin with. It is PS2 we're talking about here. And also this emulator really isn't that well optimized. For me, I'm just keeping it at one times. For presentation mode, we have fill screen, fit screen, and original size. For me, I'm just keeping things on fit screen and going from there. Now moving over into the UI settings menu and there's one really important option in here and that's rescan storage. 
This app for some reason automatically searches your phone for games. You cannot specify a specific folder to look, which kind of sucks. So what you have to do if you download a game and this app is not picking it up is just go on ahead and press rescan storage until it finds it. And the other options in here are clear unavailable games, reset your cache and change your theme. One cool feature about this app is that it automatically downloads cover art for your games. And I really like that feature. So I have two games here to test out Capcom versus SNK2 and Devil may cry. Let's take a look at CVS2. Now booting up CVS2 and you can immediately see the screen is a little off. It's shaking a heck of a lot right now. It doesn't look like it's emulating very well at all. And this continues on in game. So I booted up training mode here and the screen shaking continues. The game is playable, but it just doesn't look that great. On top of that, I can see some frame skipping here as well, which is also not that great. Now booting up Devil May Cry here and we have the same screen shaking issue. Unfortunately, Devil May Cry is also not fully playable. I can get to the main menu in this game. I can click on new game and it will start the new game, but it won't play. This is about as far as I can get in the game before the whole thing just fades to black and decides it doesn't want to load anymore super duper. On a positive note though, Play does not require a BIOS file for the PS2, and that is awesome. This app is updated very often, which is really good. The app keeps getting better and better with each update. The problem is, is it's just so early on in development right now. The emulation experience just really isn't there. According to their website, only 17.45% of PS2 games are playable, which really isn't a whole lot, but hopefully that increases pretty quickly. Unfortunately for Android right now, PS2 emulation is not that great. I mean, it's coming along, it's just not there yet. It's gonna be a while before it gets really good. I've got my fingers crossed and I am remaining patient here, but at the same time, I'm not holding my breath for anything happening anytime soon. I personally think Damon PS2 is a garbage app. I'm happy with the progress play has made and I'm hoping the momentum there continues. But anyways, that is all I've got for today. I told you, you might not be happy with this news. So let me know what you think of the state of PS2 emulation on Android in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Thank you everyone, take care.